Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the more colorful characters in the Harry Potter series was a teacher named Mad-Eye Moody, who taught defense against the dark arts. He was called Mad-Eye because in his adventures of chasing down evil wizards, he had suffered a number of grave injuries among them being blinded in his left eye. He had received a magical replacement eye that could in fact see but his was unique because it would constantly dart about in different directions, focusing here and there, as if perpetually running a scan for evildoers. Thus his name, Mad Eye. This character also had a habit of suddenly exclaiming to his students, constant vigilance. Regardless of all the advanced spells he taught, his number one lesson was constant vigilance and his ever roving eye was a visible reminder, constant vigilance. We aren't students at the Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry, and we don't usually use such a high tone phrase as constant vigilance, but we do say, be on the lookout, pay attention, or as it's put in today's gospel lesson, keep awake. If you're like me, keep awake or be on the lookout is not exactly what I want to hear on this first Sunday of Advent when we start moving towards Christmas. I want to hear about the promise of good things to come, like in Handel's Messiah, comfort ye my people. I want to hear the story of the angel coming to Mary and asking if she will carry and birth the wondrous baby. I want to hear heartwarming, uplifting songs that lead us to glorify God. What we heard today did not sound like any of this. Instead, all the lessons rang more like laments of hard times. And I think most of us have had enough of hard times. The hard times that we live in have parallels to the hard times that Jesus and his followers knew. Deep divisions lay at the root of their hard times. There was a significant divide between Pharisees and Sadducees who had little in common except their dislike of Jesus. There was undeniable division between Jews and Gentiles. And we can't forget that Rome had its boot on Israel's neck, the Roman Empire versus the occupied people, making the situation a political powder keg. And poverty was widespread with division between the haves and the have nots. We face deep divides in our time between democracies and autocracies. There are devastating civil wars, official or not, separating people into warring camps and displacing millions from their homelands. In our own country, we have social divisions that run so deep, it's hard to find ways to converse across the divides, whether about race, economics, sexuality, or even COVID. In today's readings, we hear not only be on the lookout, but sighs of longing, maybe our own longings too, longing for relief, longing for restoration to the way things used to be, longing for solutions that result in more than crumbs being distributed among a hard hit people. We hear longing in the face of overwhelming loss for God to swoop down and remedy the situation. In the Psalm, we heard the refrain, restore us, O Lord, let your countenance, your face shine upon us that we may be saved. The ancient Israelites knew the longing for things to be fixed and believed the answer indeed had to do with God's face shining upon them, upon us, as they said. This call for God's face to shine upon us as a way of bestowing long lasting life and widespread well being has deep roots. 
there's an important blessing from the book of Numbers. Some of you might know it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you and give you peace. It was believed that because God was the source of all life and because God intended for life to be good, that when God's face turned and shined on people, it brought life, goodness, and what they called shalom, which we translate as peace, but really means much more, more like wholeness in every aspect of life. I think our longing is like their longing. And I believe we sigh it as a question. God, when will you shine your face on us? The answer we get in our gospel reading today doesn't initially seem to line up with this question of longing because the answer is be on the lookout. And it's Jesus who says this. But bear in mind that Jesus has a habit of speaking in parables and by analogies that aim to shake us out of our default ways of looking at God. And Jesus, by telling us here to be on the lookout, prevents us from turning God into a superhero Messiah who charges down out of the heavens on the clouds and puts the world back in order in a snap. It's understandable that we crave an instant fix when pain and fear have been gnawing away at us. It's understandable that we look for control and we look for an omnipotent God who puts things back under control. That at such times we expect God to come with such overwhelming power that even the natural order is rattled. Jesus, however, tells us not to go there, not to get ahead of ourselves, not yet. We're not to be looking for extraordinary natural phenomena because it's that's to come after a time of suffering. And we're not there. At this moment, we are to be on the lookout. But for what or who? I believe you know the answer. The answer is God, God's face. And we really don't have to look very far. God's face is shining upon us in Jesus. God with us, fully human, fully divine. God comes to us as God's self. God knows how hard it is to be on the lookout when so much is going on and it's hard to see God. So God comes as one of us in Jesus. Who expected that? I think it's still unexpected, even more extraordinary than natural events like quaking mountains, a darkened moon, or stars falling from the sky. It's unexpected because in Jesus is the fullness of, of life and love, deeper, stronger, and far more enduring than muscle and might. So be on the lookout because God's face is shining on us in Jesus, born of humble origin, beloved for his compassion, wisdom, and truth. Be on the lookout because God's face shines on us in Jesus who embodied justice and grace, judgment and forgiveness, and love for God, self, and others, even to the point of dying on a cross. Be on the lookout because God's face shines on us in Jesus whose resurrection declares that evil and death do not have the last word. Be on the lookout because when you look, you will see Jesus offering not escape, but new life and love, leading us to God's shalom of well-being, wholeness, and abundance. Be on the lookout, and you will see God's face, Jesus, beckoning us on in hope. Amen.